Basically, owning a business is something you can't do in the Philippines. Um, there's a few things like that, uh, owning a business, owning property, uh, voting. Uh, you can't run for politics, you can't be a policeman, and you're not allowed to carry a firearm, which makes me very sad. Um, however, uh, for the important stuff, the business stuff, there are ways around that. But I've just talked to a friend of mine recently um, out of England, and he got a business license in his name uh, in Puerto Galera, Mindoro. And I've heard of that before, but I, I really don't think it's legal, and I think it, it would be problematic if you ever did that. But here's how that, uh, how that works as well. I mean, you've heard about the um, business... Uh, the 60-40 uh, uh, Filipino corporations, um, and that's all well and good. Uh, basically, the you own 40% as a foreigner, uh, and then uh, at least one Filipino owns the other 60%. That's problematic, too, because, of course, the foreigner puts up all the money. Uh, normally, the, the way that would work is you would get six Filipinos, each with 10%, there's the 60, then you would have them sign over their share certificates uh, immediately in your favor. However, problematic again, because they can always deny that they signed it because they're not notarized or anything like that, and, and that's, uh, that's become a problem before. Now, I guess a lot depends on how much you want to invest in the Philippines. Uh, if, you, uh, if it's a small business, uh, the easiest thing to do, uh, as a foreigner, you can lease in your name, and that applies to property as well. You can uh, lease a building, you can lease a piece of property. That's what I do with, with one of my resorts. I lease the land, um, so therefore the land is in my name, and I control the land. Also, uh, there's a process here called um, tax declaration, where you, where you can own the buildings on the land. So if you've got a long lease, you can control the lease. You can also own the buildings. You, of course, by virtue of the fact that you bought all the assets, uh, whatever it is, whatever kind of business you're doing, you can therefore own all the assets. So therefore, it, and it happened to me uh, early on when I arrived, I did all this, and then somebody said, oh, that's my business, see? That's my name on the wall, on the business license. And I said, no, this business license is yours for 2,000 pesos. So I'll go get another one, and you just lost your job. So uh, that's the, the best uh, protection you can get right there uh, because you control the lease, because you own the buildings, uh, because you own the assets. It's virtually yours and nobody can take that away from you. That's a sole proprietorship and that's what I do for all my stuff. Um, if you do decide you want to buy property, uh, there's a couple of uh, ways to do that as well. Um, the, easy, the easiest two, uh, you put the property in anybody's name that you want uh, and then you lease it back from them at 5,000 pesos a year and get a receipt for the first 100 years or 25 years or whatever you want. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, the other way to do that is to buy the property, put it in somebody else's name, and register a mortgage on the title, which means the mortgage is, absolutely, is, is actually typed physically on the title uh, for 14 billion pesos or whatever you want it to be, whatever whatever that number you come up with is a demand mortgage, meaning anytime you want it, they either pay you that money or sign it back to you. So a couple of ways to do that. Anyhow. Um, now, as far as lawyers go, I know, I know my, uh, my video on lawyers was not very, uh, you know, uh, didn't, didn't make people feel very good. <laughs> That's the truth though. Uh, basically when we need a lawyer in the Philippines, Whatever town it's in, usually, usually most court cases are done out of Manila or Cebu. Um, go to the biggest firm. Go to the biggest law firm. I mean, if it's important enough for you to finally go to court over something in the Philippines, 
Uh, go to the biggest firm. You just find out, okay, who's the biggest, baddest kid on the block? Go to them. It's going to charge, you know, it's going to cost you a bit of money, but it's not going to cost you anywhere near what it would in the Western world. Trust me on that one. And you got a fair chance of success because these guys will also be connected with the, uh, with the judges and everybody else, which means a little bit of, you know, cash under the table will basically get you the ruling that you want. So, uh, but that doesn't, doesn't mean you shouldn't perform due diligence. Uh, like I said before, uh, do your research, make sure you understand what you're getting into. Now, luckily, all law and all business in the Philippines is done in English. So, no excuses.